that is so ridiculously good. This amazing curry needs a homemade curry paste and I have all the tips and tricks for you to make it really easily at home. This is my Malaysian Capitan chicken. So this recipe is very special, not only because it tastes really good, but also because it comes from my new cookbook, just as delicious. Uh, this is a collection of more of my tips and techniques and tricks and recipes that you guys love on my channel. I've really gone deep diving in here. Um, I have step-by-step -step shots for you guys. There are QR codes with video tips and techniques. And I just love the fact that, you know, these are the recipes that you guys love and it's all in a collection right here. All right, so let's make Malaysian Capitan chicken, which is on page, what page is it, Dax? 153. <laughs> 152, uh, close, close, but no cigar. All right, let's make the curry paste first of all, because I think for me, being able to make a curry paste is one of life's essential skills, um, which my cookbook is full of, life's essential skills. So I have my dried chilies here and they've been soaking in some hot water and that's just to soften them up so I can blend them up a little easier. Just squeeze out the liquid and then the easiest thing to do here is get some scissors and chop them straight into your blender. Now don't throw away that chili soaking liquid. I've got a really great tip for using that a little bit later on. Okay, so uh, the rest of my ingredients for this paste, I need some shallots. Galangal typically looks like this. It's sort of like ginger, but it's got a pink skin and the flavor is a lot different. So where I would describe ginger as kind of like an earthy kind of flavor, Galangal has a very citrusy kind of pine forest kind of flavor to it. And if you want to compare, here you go, you've got your ginger and Galangal. So that's what you're looking out for in your Asian grocery store. I just need a piece of this Galangal and slice the skin off. Now for the ginger and some garlic. What was next? Consult the book. Okay, lemongrass. It's nice having my own book to reference. <laughs> lemongrass is next. And you just need to bruise that lemongrass just so you can um, loosen the tough outer part of the lemongrass stalk and then just slice the inner pale part. Now here's an optional because these guys here are called candle nuts. They kind of look like a darker macadamia, but the flavor is different. They're slightly bitter. The candle nut is often used in Southeast Asian curries as a little bit of a thickener, uh, and it does have its own unique, slightly nutty flavor. I have used macadamias in the past. It's not a deal breaker. If you can't get a hold of a candle nut, don't worry, you can still make this recipe. So candle nuts go in. Now some turmeric. So now we need some shrimp paste. Now I like to describe shrimp paste as the Vegemite of the East. <laughs> it doesn't smell so good, but you know, I mean, I like the smell of it, but most people don't, including Dax. It doesn't smell great on its own, but once you cook it or put it into your curry paste, it adds a lovely, deep savouriness, saltiness, that umami factor that I'm always on about. So do give it a try, please. And then just some salt here. All right, let's blend this up. Now, typically what you'll find when you are blending a curry paste in a blender rather than doing it in a mortar and pestle is that you get this business where everything is kind of chopped. It's not actually blending together. Instead of adding oil, which a lot of people do, I prefer to add the soaking water from your chilies because the oil tends to emulsify things, changes the flavor and the texture. Water will just simply evaporate when you go to cook it. So much better option. You might need to just scrape down your blender a couple of times. So this is the kind of situation that you're after here. It doesn't have to be like super, super smooth. I kind of like people to know that I've made, like made this curry paste myself. So I want it to have that homemade kind of feeling. Now just scoop that out, see that texture there. So now to cook the curry, I just need some oil into a hot pan. All right, so I'm gonna pop my curry paste into my oil here. And you just want it to gently sizzle away one, um, because I don't want to burn 
the paste, but two, if you're gonna get that sort of turmeric red splatter everywhere, that's not gonna be good. It won't come out, so <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> okay, let that sizzle away, keep it stirring. This curry actually comes from a type of cuisine called Nonya cuisine, which is a mix of Chinese and Malay heritage, and I just really love these flavors. Ah, it smells so good. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my chicken in there. I'm using thighs and drumsticks because this is the type of curry that kind of cooks for a little while. The chicken becomes really tender and kind of falls off the bone. And that's one of the other things I really love about it. Now mix your chicken through that paste as it's kind of sizzling away. And the chicken will just start to take on a little bit of color, start to make friends with those curry paste flavors in there. Now I'm gonna add some coconut milk. and some water, and just some final aromatics here. I've got some magruit lime leaves and a few more lemongrass stalks. Just mix that through and then turn that heat down to low and let it simmer away for 30 minutes. So while my curry is simmering, let me run you through my top tips for this recipe. Number one, use the chili water while you're making your curry paste. Number two, this is an excellent curry for meal prep. There are no starchy vegetables here that'll get all soft in the freezer, so go ahead and make this in advance. Number three, you haven't seen this one yet, but it's coming up. Use lime juice and sugar to season your curry right at the very end for the best flavor. Okay, so at this point, your kitchen should be smelling really, truly amazing, and mine certainly is. So just fine little bits and pieces here. I want a little squeeze of lime, and a little dash of sugar, and then mix that through. And you can see just how rich and lush that curry sauce is. I mean, that color is so amazing. Now this is ready to go, so. Serve up your chicken pieces. Ladle over that curry sauce. And there you go, my friends, one of Southeast Asia's most amazing curries. And I mean, I love to have roti bread with this one. Dunk it into that sauce. Mm. That is so ridiculously good. It's so rich and savory and spiced and amazing. So there you go, guys. This recipe is in my cookbook, just as delicious. I hope you check it out and I hope you love it just as much as I do. See you guys. Hey guys, my cookbook, Just As Delicious, is on sale right now. Head to my website if you wanna check it out. I hope you love it as much as I do.